This is Twit. Um, how do you like your Oreos? Do you eat them all at once, Lisa, or do you open them up and eat the cream first, or you dunk them in milk? What's your Oreo <laughs> strategy? Uh, I usually open them up. I, I flop back and forth, though. Sometimes I just eat it like a regular oh, cookie. Well, then but you'll, I, you'll be interested like in this. Up. The study of why Oreo cream filling usually sticks to one side, they're calling it Oreology, and uh, MIT has actually published a paper in the Journal uh, Physics of Fluid. Um, <laughs> the uh, co-author, a graduate student at MIT, Crystal Owens, her primarily uh, uh, studies uh, 3D printing with complex... <laughs> oh, you got some Oreos there. Go ahead. Twist it. One side. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You that should mail not. that to her right now that, because that completely mm -hmm. contradicts the, the, con the conclusions. Did you warm that Oreo up? Had you pre split no, it? No, I, I literally just took it out of the package right now. I, I did it. my own research. You later. are not on Noom. You have a package <laughs> of Oreos right there. Oh, boy. That is actually, this could be a good test. Are you going to eat it or put it back in the box? <laughs> <laughs> there, oh, it so, goes in the garbage. <laughs> I know you're into 3D printing. I don't know what 3D printing with complex fluid inks is. Uh, but complex fluids are all around us, she says. Many foods, sauces, condiments, yogurt, ice cream, and other products uh, are complex fluids. You know, like near their solid nor liquid, I guess. I don't know. I, she, I think that's uh, like some sort of fluid in suspension, yeah. basically. It's a complex fluid. Yeah. Yeah, so she designed a tool <laughs> to to twist the Oreo. Um, uh, you know, it it's an Oreo stress rheometer, R H E O M E T E R. It twists the fluid between parallel discs in order to measure its viscosity. She had an epiphany, looking, staring at her rhe rheometer, said, "Oh, wait a minute." I could use that to study Oreo breakage. <laughs> so as I you do. So as one does. So I proposed my idea to my research advisor and the project was born. Turns out Oreos are a canonical example of parallel plate rheometry. Uh, the cookies are an everyday tri-layer laminate composite. The cream is the fluid sample, and the two wafers are the parallel plates. Counter-rotating the wafers, that's what you just did, Robert, causes the cream to shear and flow before fracturing as the two wafers come apart. But your results, your results are completely contrary to the results of the study because... Shall we try again? Yeah, do another one. <laughs> Okay, so counterclockwise, right? Well, any way so you want. Counter, no, you're allowed. Counterclockwise. Yeah. I feel like and? I should be doing a drum roll. Uh, no. That one, no. You know, you have special Vatican Oreos. That's that's there. There's something. She said, I had in my mind, if you twist the Oreos perfectly, as Robert just did, you should split the cream perfectly in the middle. But what actually happens, contrary to our own research, I might point, might point out, is the cream always, almost always comes off on one side. The... The cream distribution is not affected by rotation rate, the amount of cream filling, or the flavor. They got double stuff. <laughs> they got all kinds of flavors. Uh, they tried it all different ways with the rheometer. Uh, she does say the rotation rate does play an important role in whether or not the cookies break apart cleanly. If you try to twist the Oreos faster, you can do another one, Robert. Try it fast. Okay. It actually takes more. It's harder the faster you twist. So if right, you're so. stressed and desperate to open your cookie, do it a little slower. But <laughs> oh, oh. Well, no, Jeez <laughs> Louise! Jeez these are defective Louise. Oreos. These are defective. I th actually, these might be counterfeit Oreos. Oh, that's I mean, what I it is. You're not. Oh, they're Hydrox. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Those are Hydrox. Those ain't Oreos. Anyway, so oh. you just you're just with your own empirical results. Just as the Vatican and the Jesuits have always been known to do, you have completely <laughs> destroyed. It's this, what we do. That's yes. what you do, the scientific paper, with your own investigation. Uh, but, by the what? way, if, if you want to do the studies at home, they have open-sourced their 3D-printed Oreo meter. So you could use it at home or in the classroom.
Oh, I am so printing that thing up. You should. Cookies can be mounted onto two clamps powered by rubber bands. Powered may not be the, quite the right word there. The <laughs> next step is to load pennies one by one into either of two symmetric penny castles, thereby applying torque in precise increments. Use new pennies for the best results. When they tested their oreometer in the lab, they achieved similar results. Leo, I'm going to make you one of these, except I'm going to power it with a stepper motor and an Arduino. All right, baby. Let's, let's make this let's, let's make this real. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had an Oreo. What? What? <laughs> what I mean, that is an anomaly. Here. That's <laughs> Wow. You you eat some sort of weird British biscuit that that tastes like malted barley. Ah, we have something called a Custard cream. Custard cream. And a, and a bourbon uh, biscuit. A bo Wait a minute. They don't have Oreos in England? But we probably do. They've I've just to. never had one. They've got Oreos they, everywhere. I'm sure we do. I'm Oreos sure we are do. everywhere. I've you get never, Oreos in every country one. of the world. I'm sure we do. I've just never had one. <laughs> but but now I'm thinking, could you apply this to the custard cream or the bourbon biscuit? <laughs> the chat room, I hate to tell you this, Nate, says that your drum skins look like opened Oreos behind you. <laughs> <laughs> So you may have had Oreos that just never knew it, okay? Yeah. <laughs>